Chapter 5, Product User Positioning. Chapter 5, the Consumer Behaviour Chapter, is a chapter that I am asking you to read. I'm not going to go through it in the videos because a lot of what you need to do with Chapter 5 is contextualise it to your own project. If you're creating a new product, you need to be looking at the innovation work. If you're creating a Me Too product, you're looking at late majority. So there's a lot of contextual work you have to do. A lot of co-creation work you have to do to get the best out of the theory. However, product user positioning is one of these areas that you want to go through the whole set of categories because it's an idea generation time. It's going to help you start thinking, what can I do with my product? So looking at each of the user positions to start with, why we're going to go through this is that each product user position provides you with a short phrase of why someone's going to use the internet. So we start here, product user positioning, they're going to use the internet to learn. So if someone's going to use this to learn, what can we then provide to them? On an Instagram, it could be instruction manuals, it could be recipes, it could be instruction, 15 second instructional videos, 15, a single photo, instructional photo. On Twitter, it could be a guide to a location, it could be a question and answer. On a blog, it could be detail. On a YouTube, it could be an instructional video. Using the internet to learn as the motive, what can we do with that is what you want to be approaching this. And all the way through, in this particular section, we're going to talk about, you're going to read about it as, here's a motive, here are some sites that are currently doing it, and here are some related business objectives. Here's why it's worth something to you as an organisation. So, the second category is using the internet to search. Now, since you're, if you do any form of research, if you use Google, this is what you're doing. It's not just when you use Google. It's when you go to YouTube to find that song that's in your head, that's been in your head, you've been humming half the chorus to for the last week. It's Wikipedia, obviously, but it's IMDB, less obviously. When you you saw that movie and you're like, I know that actor from somewhere else. So basically, this is some form of information search. It's got a lot of CV theory behind it. It relies on top of mind awareness. But it then also provides you with a bunch of means and mechanisms that you can use. And what you're looking for here is, if someone's using the internet to search, does my particular offering meet that need? If it does, how does it facilitate their search behaviour? Internet to communicate. So product user positioning, internet to communicate. Basically, what happens here that is actually something you're doing that's useful? PR, is it something to talk about? Are they using it to communicate and do you offer something that's worth talking about? And this is where shared content, viral content, as much as I hate saying the word viral content, this is where if you're going to communicate, if your site can provide something for people to talk about, then you are facilitating communication. Convenience and community. There are two separate categories together. What is your operation, your Twitter account, your Instagram account, your Facebook page, your YouTube, what does it do that makes it convenient? What does it do to save some time, cuts a cost? How does it make it easier? What's your relative advantage that you're providing here? Community links it back to conversation. What is the shared clustering? Now one of the things that's worth noting here is that if you go to a popular YouTube video, you'll find a lot of people going and talking about how they came. You know, in the comment section, the few comments that are readable are often things of thumbs up if you came here from this site. 
So there's an attempt to promote both the community of the site they've come from, but also promote themselves as part of that community. Can you facilitate that? Can you be part of a community in the platforms you're using, which therefore lets you facilitate either community membership, you're contributing to the community, moderation, how does community fit with your objectives? And you want to be thinking about this because community is a market segment. Communication is a behaviour. Community seeking and being part of a community is a behaviour, but a community itself can be a distinct market segment. Who's your audience? Is your audience a community that you can work with? Ah, now this is the one where it gets interesting. From an audience perspective, from market segmentation perspective, your audience desires to be anonymous. And there are good reasons and there are bad reasons. We don't have time to go into either camp here, but anonymity is a thing. And pseudonymity, where you operate under an alias, a recognisable ongoing branded alias, does what you're doing, facilitate it, support it, work with it. Does your Twitter, if you're using this on Twitter, will you only engage with people who have a known profile, a recognizable profile? Will you follow back people who are pseudonyms on Instagram or do you have a real name only policy? Try not to have a real name only policy because it's exclusionary and it's got a lot more problems than pseudonym policies. Also, there are a lot of people who are known by a name that is not their real name because they are professionals who use a branded identity. In music, in movies, professional wrestling, branded identities are just a part of the job. When you join the Actors Guild, you get an Actors Guild name. You get a new name, which is your branded identity. So that's just like getting keys to a car if you're going to be driving a taxi. It's no more or less just part of the job. So anonymity, pseudonymity and real name are three things. They are different ways to use the internet. How does it work for you? Internet for escapism. Do you facilitate escapism? Instagram, huge facilitator of escapism. At the same time, so is Twitter. Because Twitter is getting into a pub chat with a bunch of mates. You can be talking to people who, in some cases you haven't seen for 20 years, who suddenly crop up in a conversation that you're having on the internet with a bunch of mutual friends. It's not the real life of all being in the same room, but it's the escapism of facilitated communication. Does what you're doing facilitate escapism? Is that a thing you want to achieve? Is that a thing that is useful for your audience? Recreation, look, you don't need to necessarily explain it, but positioning, 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 positioning. Are you creating internet presence that are work-related or recreation-related? Is your Instagram account a professional account about stats and figures and numbers and important things? Or is it cute kittens, cat videos and entertainment? What is it that you are providing? Are you facilitating this use? Can you facilitate this use? Product user positioning of keeping up. Instagram, blogging, less Twitter, YouTube. Using the internet to keep up with the Joneses. See what, you know, you're using the internet because you're trying to see what the fuss is, but you're also trying to stay you know, in touch with the mainstream. You, know, you don't want to lose out. You've got that sense of, you, you're worried about losing. You can use, you can facilitate this. Your Instagram account can showcase ideal lives. It can, your Twitter account can give people rapid fire summary of the day's news. Here's a quick update on last night's popular TV shows. 
a nine o'clock Monday morning brief rundown of what were the important things over the weekend, top football scores and plays of the day. Keeping up with other people, keeping up appearances as facilitated by the service offerings that you're creating. All right, this is my favorite one is using the internet because Which means, if you want to do that, you can facilitate this, but you are basically playing for the wow factor. You're paying for someone picking up the phone, scrolling your Instagram account, blinking, going, huh, nice. That's the sort of one word, more eyebrows than syllables type response that you're looking for. That takes work. There's an enormous amount of work editing, post-production and pre-production behind it but making the internet inherently awesome through what you do and doing awesome things for the internet is a legitimate strategic goal, it is a legitimate use position, and it's a legitimate strategy. Also, if you can pull this off, it's the sort of thing where you're more likely to become the overnight instant success because awesome is shareable. And also awesome is quantifiable, can involve product placement, and believe me, GoPro has made a fortune from facilitating, sponsoring, and assisting the pursuit of awesome. Other things you can do with the internet. The internet is a vending machine. Really great. Also a completely legitimate strategy for you this semester. Do you make stuff? Do you record stuff? Do you build things? An Etsy account backed by an Instagram account that takes photos of the key things, has a buy it now button, Perfect, it's a vending machine. Software, music, art, images, 3D printing files to download, whatever means and mechanism you can, sell stuff through the internet and the internet becomes a vending machine. Put credit in, get stuff out. The internet is the ACM, again, you're less likely to be doing this, but, don't overlook the idea of if you wanted to set up something of value that was out of your possible social media platforms like your Instagrams, your an Instagram of deals of the day, a tweet of discounts, a blog dedicated to saving money. Internet as ACM is mostly about doing this directly, but if you can show people how to, if you can facilitate this approach, then there is a legitimate use that you are targeting and creating a value around that use. Internet for self-expression. This is a large amount of what you can do with your social media accounts. Is you could just go, I want to run this to be me. I want to express myself. I want to be the artistic. When you meet, because inevitably a bunch of you are going to go and look me up on the internet and find out what I do on the various platforms, you will discover that basically this is pretty much what I spend most of my social media on, is self-expression. In one part, my life is in fact an episode of Night Vale. In another part, I very carefully craft messages to facilitate people, assuming my life is an episode of Night Vale. But self-expression is also a really good use position of creating a way to facilitate other people and facilitate other people's means of self-expression. So this can be the blog post that is about how to do online videos. This can be the Twitter account that talks about the things that this week on uh, the internet, we found the following artists who've created this stuff. It can be the Etsy summary accounts that point you to the cool finding of the day. It can be the cool hunter accounts that point to here's a really interesting artist, musician or filmmaker. So you can use this. You can either be the self-expression yourself or the facilitator of others finding self-expression. So this is your question set. Consumer behavior. It's a big, lumpy, beautiful chapter lots of stuff to chew on, a lot of stuff to work with, but your positioning strategies are a really great blunt way to get in and go, I need some content, 
what am I going to address today? Which one of these product uses, which one of these uses of the internet can I address through the content I create here and now? That's uh, one of the things you're going to be looking for this semester is your motive to make stuff. Here's a bunch of motives. One of the things on that list should be something you can make as content for your social media account today and tomorrow and the next day.